where the election voting place was, right across the street, there's a San Julian Park. And so there are issues about, oh, is it, you know, no electioneering within, you know, 200 feet of the voting polls. So I heard, they, oh, we need to break out a, a ruler and measure and see if it's, you know, really too, and so the whole thing. So knowing that that, that, that negative uh, energy was gonna come towards us, we had a totally different community entity uh, uh, to secure that uh, park permit and that wasn't a uh, get out the vote election. That was just a coincidental. That was a, a pep rally. We actually got a flyer back on the wall next to uh, exhibit number nine. And it's uplift skid row. It just so happened, it just so happened, it coincided with our election. So it's just a wonderful rallying point. And you know, as far as LA can, LA can, and some, you know, some other folks who came and said, hey, we're having a, a uplift uh, a skid row pep rally. So hey, we're gonna have, uh, uh, some uh, hot dogs and you know some things and, and so that's over there. Our elections over here, you know, it's wonderful that people can go in and rally. And so some folks set up an outreach table outside of the you know the 200 yards and other feet as far as electioneering. So everything was perfectly legal. We dot our eyes, we cross our teeth. You know, come back on election day. You know, we we waited and then on the on the, on the table where the TVs are. There's a, you can see like after the results, then you know, we stayed there, we had a delegation watch the count. Um, we came, you know, we had to, after we got the results, we came out and announced it, officially announced it to the, in the, to the community in the park. You know, technically we lost by 60 votes. Um, you know, God, that's so emotional for our community because you know, I mean, it was a long, hard fought battle. There's a lot of people that came together and contributed and, and really, it, it, it was a lot of just this new, just positive energy in our community. And so it was hard, heartening, disheartening to uh, watch all of that just, just to have that negative, that negative uh, result uh, for our community. And so then, just days before our election, we found out there was this vote no email that went out through uh, uh, somehow third party United DTLA, and then there was another one that was DTLA United. These, these different front organizations with all roads led back to a uh, dealing in the neighborhood county. So, you know, while they can put out the fact that there's a vote, they can't take a stand. They can't decide yes, yes or no. And so because we're the subdivision process, because we're the um, applicant, a vote yes is for us. So a vote no would be to remain, for a to remain within the downtown Central neighborhood council. So in essence, a vote no would be voting for dealing. So it's either Skid Row or downtown Central neighborhood county. And so that made them a candidate. So then by them pushing out a vote no uh, uh, email against the Skid Row Council, that, that, that was illegal electioneering on their part of the candidate. And so uh, we put that forth. There was an election challenge. Uh, we had to file it within five days of the election. Uh, that uh, election challenge review panel happened May 3rd. Uh, the Dunn issued a 70 page report of why. We had three challenges, actually we submitted five, three of them got accepted, and um, the city put out this 70 page report saying that um, uh, why, these are the recommendations, why you should, you know, like basically, you know, uh, uh, reject all three of the uh, 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 challenges. Um, we turned, we spoke to those issues, and uh, the, long story short, the panel voted in our favor. So we didn't have not one, not two, we had three uh, valid complaints on the vote no email. And so this is a really short uh, challenge remedy. Um, there's basically four options, uh, you know, uh, uh, disqualification as a candidate, disqualification of votes, um, a deduction of a loss of funding, or even a referral to the city attorney's office for crim further criminal uh, prosecution. And so we didn't think funding, this wasn't a funded matter, you know, that came up later on. Or this wasn't about you know criminal prosecution, but just disqualify them. We get our district council thing. And, and so then when they came back um, and two weeks later, March 19th, uh, May 19th, excuse me, the uh, city basically said, "Oh, um, this is uh, uh, we're just gonna throw out your uh, the uh, district uh, total disregard to the uh, uh, the uh, review panel's findings, and we're just gonna uh, certify the election as is." So you know, with that, we had 60 days from that point to uh, file. Uh, the next step was a, a lawsuit, and so by July 19th, we had to file that, and you can see on that last, on uh, Exhibit 11, underneath is the, uh, actually our latest court date was uh, last month, February 7th, 
but on the right side of that, it says filed July 19, 2017. So we, we were able to get legal representation and uh, we filed a lawsuit. Um, you know, we amended it, uh, uh, made an amendment, our, our writ. And so right now uh, we're in the process of seeking current uh, uh, legal, new legal representation. And, uh, you know, we have the next date, a uh, court date coming up uh, in the next couple of months. And so we're gonna fight this. Uh, and, and, you know, so we on the state level and a federal level, uh, because Skid Row is a majority African-American uh, population, uh, the Voter Rights Act of 1965 even comes into play. You know, there's voter fraud, you know, the vote, you know, what we, uh, uh, Captain McNamee did a wonderful job of filing PRA and getting like the, the voter tallies. You know, they send all, uh, we can't even, it doesn't, based on, we have on the wall an exhibit, uh, I believe it's number six, I'm sorry, number eight, and it has the official voting results of the election results. And so then we'll be, okay, we wanna see the PRA, Let, let's see, you know, all the, the voter polls, the voter rolls, everything, registration, or just everything. All the numbers don't add up. We have no idea, this doesn't make any sense. So everything, so there's, there's you know, violation of, of state law as far as online election, uh, voter fraud, voter suppression, uh, uh, illegal counting of votes. You know, I mean, it, it just goes on. Voter Rights Act of 1965. It, it, it's just a boatload of issues, and, uh, and we don't want to push everything out there because we still we got some other stuff. But because it's a pending trial, um, you know, we don't want to release everything. But we do want to share and be fully open and transparent. We got the city dead bank. You know, so now the whole thing is like, do we want to sue and? You know, millions and millions of dollars, and take away from the taxpayer funding. I mean, I mean, what what are we doing? So that's, or do we just want Skid Labor Council, and that's it? You know, and of course, attorneys' fees. And so all of a sudden, you know, where do we go? How does it end? And so, if the city wants to put up a fight, uh, you know, not only will this go, you know, this, we're willing to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. So with that, um, you know, we're committed to this, and, and sure, there's opportunities. Uh, through the subdivision applications to, you know, to reapply again. Um, we were the very first uh, elections, the applicants to have a subdivision election. Um, since then, the original ordinance that's on the wall, they've actually, I don't know if that's the latest one, but they revised it and basically skid row proofed the subdivision ordinance. And it's like, there's no, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, I'll get you on, we're not going to, um, you know, not me. I don't want to take on that, that that role. I'm still fighting this fight. As long as this lawsuit is pending, I don't want to offer a new subdivision application. And people say, oh, all you have to do is just, you know, subdivide and go ahead and vote. And it's like, no. So let me just close with this, that one of our strategies, knowing that all, as, as it came, as Adrian spoke to, all these emails, all this opposition on, on, on social media, you know, being on D-Lane, just knowing that there was so overwhelming uh, 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 opposition, you know, we felt that through our normal boundaries, 3rd to 7th Main Alameda come to find out on the north uh, eastern part of our boundaries that is commonly known that back in the original uh, 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 neighborhood council uh, divvying up of boundaries that uh, when we mentioned Arts District and Little Tokyo come to find out that there were five blocks of Skid Row that actually Little Tokyo claim and put it in that application, and because Skid Row didn't have any leadership, it wasn't even aware of it. That's still on the books. So when we offered our natural borders of Skid Row, all of a sudden their boundaries were included. So not only did we have the downtown centers, anybody with a part of the downtown centers neighborhood council could vote, but then if you were part of the historic cultural neighborhood council, you could vote as well. So that meant uh, Little Tokyo Arts District, Chinatown, uh, uh, Solano. Uh, Canyon, uh, Victor Heights, and El Pueblo, and those those are some of those communities over by Dodger State. And so we got a whole bunch of people outside to get row like voting and weighing in on our little old community. And so um, you know we weren't trying to land grab. We're not trying to. All we're trying to do is just address our issues. And so it's frustrating. So, but we're willing to fight this all the way up to the Supreme Court. So that's where we are. Thank you guys for listening. Any questions? Oh, let me start with Mr. Garcia in the back first. Uh, oh, when you mentioned um, about the uh, results, I thought state law had priority over local, like the supremacy clause or the federal laws are on top. And don't, yes. don't state laws um, outweigh local laws? Absolutely. And so a lot of state law, laws are definitely applied in uh, local elections. Um, as far as neighborhood councils, again, the city is arguing 
saying that neighborhood councils, the entire neighborhood council system is not subjected to a state law. That's, some, that's another point that we're gonna argue in court. Uh, we feel that it is, strongly feel that it is. How could it not be when there's taxpayer funding involved, city clerks, and, and a lot of other city agencies, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, and all these other entities uh, for overseeing the elections. Uh, McNinney and then you can McNinney. Um, I also want to thank uh, Poverty Department very much, again, for hosting this exhibit. Um, the number one question that I get asked, and I was um, very involved in this effort to start a Skin Rainbow Council, the number one question I get asked or a uh, comment I get is, why don't you just submit another application? <laughs> and um, it's really hard for me to give a, a quick and short retort to that, like why we don't want to, but what I, I think to, in a way that I can express clearly why I don't wanna put energy into that right now, it's because of what the city did to subvert right. this effort. Oh, yeah. The city not only imposed online voting, even though there was a ban citywide, they also rejected their own panel's recommendation to give us a Skid Row Neighborhood Council. And on top of that, I think that the, the vote numbers were fudged. Yeah. They can't even prove to me, despite numerous public records requests, that the vote is what they claim it to be. So. What I'm saying is the city is, we're, you know, whatever they want to do, they're doing to change, to make the outcome be us not getting our neighborhood council. Therefore, they will do it again. Yes. And it'll just be the same thing over and over. And it's a lot of work. Let me tell you, it was a lot of work for this community to put together this effort. A, 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 a lot of testifying, I mean, there are dozens of people, hundreds of people that took part in this effort. It was a tremendous, and you know, it would be horrifying for this to happen again. We got them by the balls this time. We got them, and it's important for me to follow that through. That's all I want to do. And yeah. just thank you for that, Ms. Mm -hmm. if we get to the other hands. Um, just quickly, I want to say, um, speaking of the results, as far as the election, um, Technically, there are 826 no votes, and there were uh, 726 yes votes. On the, uh, the actual board, it says 724, but there were 11 provisional ballots, meaning people didn't have their ID. Uh, they, let you, they let them vote anyway, and they kind of put their, their, their vote on ice, and they had 72 hours to come back and, 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 and prove that who they were. And so two of those people actually came back and those two votes got added to Skid Row's book title. So 726 and 826, 766, I'm sorry. And, and, and 826 says 764 on the back. Sorry, I had to talk about this for so long. The numbers are up there. And so technically they say that we lost by up 60 votes. And of the 826 no votes, um, only 19 were cast in person at the James Wood Community uh, Center in Skid Row as no vote. So that means 806, oh, I was 806, 809, <laughs> oh, we got 806, let me just say 806, uh, were, were cast votes, were cast online against us. So uh, online voting was critical in terms of undermining our efforts to create a scale on every count. And those people were bust in that voted no. They, they bust them in. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, yeah. Yes. We saw the shuttle buses uh, yeah. bring in some uh, employees. It was perfectly legal. Just <laughs> bring them to the. You know, how many people of the seven hundred and something who said yes were voting on site? I mean, that's a, that's a super interesting detail, right? Yeah, and so uh, uh, I know our own, our homeless community. There were over two hundred people that voted yes. Um, so I, all the uh, the specific numbers I forgot. I haven't looked at the numbers in a while. You, we had over uh, five hundred. Uh, uh, votes that were cast online, as far as yes. So you know, but but to say you know. So they say. Right? Yeah, right. They so. can't prove it. Please, I. Everyone should ask for uh, the vote tally. Please ask the city. I'm encouraging. So yes, yeah, so 826. I mean, 19 were physical. No, I mean 807 
and do the math right quick. So 807 we cash online. Um, we'll start in the back. Uh, so <clears throat> the city says that state law doesn't apply to neighborhood councils. Does that mean that the Brown Act no longer applies to neighborhood councils? That's a great question. Uh, obviously it does because they uh, they uphold each and every meeting that's Brown Act, uh, uh, has to be Brown Act compliance, even the posting of the agendas in, in, in the whole process. So the Brown Act does. So, so I don't know how they can so pick they and, can choose. and choose. That's a great point. Yeah. Are you? Do you happen to have a law degree? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> I was uh, involved in SLNC for Okay, so all right. All about Brown Act. Now. Okay, great. But I have one follow up question. Sure. Uh, why did you take the money from the city and the council? Why does it have to be one or the other? What do you I mean, mean I, I think you, the Skid Row suffered dam damages, so you should be entitled to the money that you were talking about and also having your council. Oh, absolutely. Why, why does it? Yeah. No, no, it's not an either oh. or. I'm oh, okay. sorry. Maybe I, I wasn't I, clear. I kind of, that's what I got. From oh, story. yeah, no. Well, well, the whole thing is what I'm what I meant by money, not the money from the city, because each year there's forty five thousand dollars. So yeah. like, like Herman, they won. So they've already got their allocation of oh, their yeah. forty five. So we're so we're out of one cycle. You know, as June, as July 1st comes, there's a whole nother cycle. So that could be ninety thousand right there. What I'm talking about is damages. Yeah. Oh, you know, so and yeah. so, how can we? I mean, you know, in any law uh, lawsuit, you know, not only is it the issue, but then there's damages that could be applied. So now we're talking about damages for the Skid Row community, like the fragile mental psyche, collective mental uh, damages, like could be in the tens of millions each. I mean, like so, how far? I'm saying, how as a community, we would have to decide how far. What do we want to list as our damages? Because that was to be cheated to to to. Go through the process, dot I's, cross T's, do each and everything that was required of us by the book. You know, that in and of itself is 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 great accomplishment for us in Skid Row. We're you know, Skid Row community prop. Then to go through that and then only to have our trusted officials to you know to to rig the system and then to come out and say that we like that mental, that's traumatizing. So I mean, damages. Uh, you know, we're gonna have to like sit down and pick a number within collectively as a, as a group, like, or do we even want to uh, go in that direction, or do we just want to get our scale neighbor council and just address our issues, or do we want to send it? We can't. It, it's one thing to send the city a message, but if we ask for damages, that technically would be taking away taxpayer money from you know the rest of the city. So that that's what I that's what I was referring to. Okay. Antonio, you had a question. Thank you. Uh, just oh. to clarify sure. that piece, so with that eight hundred and six no votes. 807. 807. I spoke. Okay. Uh, they're counting the votes that were cast at pop up polls yes. around the city. And that was one of the things. Well, not around the city, around downtown Los Angeles. Around with, downtown Los Angeles. With yeah. And I forgot, I don't know if you know the number. I remember Hype calculated it, like the number of available voting hours, hours for folks, folks at pop up polls 10 days before the election, as opposed to the four hour window right. that folks in community had to vote on the day. Right. Um, so just to, again, like this, that, that, that have, have a touch more detail there. Absolutely. And so that's the whole thing. You know, it's, it's so much information is overwhelming. Thank you, Antonio. We, we, we try to, you know, make our presentation as brief, but, you know, we still don't want to be too brief. But as far as, you know, voting hours, when, on, when on, Antonio is speaking to, when online voting was added 13 days before our election, uh, and then it uh, came online and, and, and you were able to vote, uh, days after it was approved, um, as opposed to the physical polling place was four hour window. On uh, April 6th, between hours of 3, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., that's all, and if you're in line before 7 p.m., they still let you vote, but it's a four hour voting window. Online with all these days, uh, again, a, a, a supporter, an ally, uh, did the math, and I think they said it was 235 hours to four. So, you know, they had all this energy and all this opportunity to vote no. It was just a tremendous uphill battle for us. And then again, when we look at the voter tallies, maybe they, maybe we still, you know, kick butt in that. I don't know. And so, you know, that, that there's another issue that needs to go to. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We had the same time to vote, right? Everybody could vote for those 30 days, right? Either yes or no. Sure. So, like, in that sense, everybody has the same chance. 
Uh, Not necessarily because in, in, in Skid Row, in Skid Row, you know, if you've got folks that are homeless, don't have access to computers, don't have access to anything electronic, tablets, smartphones, you know, you know, you have to upload personal documentation, so you need a scanner to upload. I mean, there's a there's a there's a lot with that. And so, you know, that that heavily, you know, the pendulum swayed heavily in the opposition's favor. And so, you know, yeah, it wasn't it, it fair and balanced as it should have been. And then the fact that, you know, 13 days before the election. So, you know, as the chair of the Skill and Council Formation Committee, you know, our, our outreach was focused on get to the polls, you know, get to the polls, get to the polls. We've actually had a, a video footage. I don't know if it's part of the, this exhibit, but we've got video footage where the city held three town hall meetings. We speak to it on, uh, I believe it's, uh, uh, oh, there it is in uh, exhibit uh, six. And they had three town hall meetings and they constantly said, there will be no online voting. There'll be no online voting. There'll be no online voting. So great, so our hours is get up, we gotta get our people to the polls. Four hours, we gotta get everybody to the polls. Then less than two weeks, before the election, oh, there's gonna be online vote. Okay, wait a minute, we're not. Hold on, it, you know. So we otherwise we could have had opportunity to plan to help get maybe a, a, a grassroots organization or outside organization to come into our community, set up some tablets, you know, cell phones, smartphones, scanners. Uh, you know, we could have, uh, you know, but less than two. It's just not enough. That's too much coordination. That that we you know, there's a lot of moving parts. We we weren't ready for that. And then the city like. They didn't, didn't uh, provide any technical support to help in that aspect either. So, I mean, what, you know, the, 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 gosh, that was, that was difficult. But, uh, Adrian, do you know yeah, anything sorry. about the online voting, how that was, how, how that was cooked up behind the scenes? I, you know, I, I'm sorry. That I don't know. I mean, well, I'm sorry. So say if you said you lived in Skid Row, mm -hmm. Um, you have to pro provide documentation of, uh, you know, your address. You know, whether it's state ID, Cal you know, California ID, something. If you said you own property in Skid Row, you have to have proof of ownership. Whether it's a deed. Is that the same as in person? Did you have to do that, or in person you didn't have to do that? Um, yeah, in person you have to do that as well, right? But then you also, if you did that in person, you it's go to a kiosk that was electronic, so that actually qualified as online voting. It wasn't a paper ballot. It was either paper ballot or anything electronic was actually considered online voting. So whether whether it was a pop-up poll, whether it was actually online from your own computer, your home cell phone, and what have apparatus, or if it was at the, the actual physical polling place, but it was on electronic, anything and everything electronic as that we know of was considered online voting. So Adrian, you first two things. I'm not going to ask your question, but also before that, you had your hand over about something else. In, in answer, uh, there's an additional thing about your question about um, it wasn't just that the online voting was uh, very unfair to homeless people and people who don't have access to it, but the pop up polls were located, some of them in commercial office buildings and bid offices. Like the one at the Fashion District bid was in the California Market Center in Ninth and Los Angeles. And, you know, there's security guards in the entrance. You try to go in there if you're homeless and go up to the 11th floor to vote, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. So, um, I don't know that anybody tried, but uh, you know why would they try? Uh, it's another way in which the public was discriminated. Sure. Um, what was the, what was it you wanted to say? That was it. Ago? Oh, okay. That, that was what I wanted to say. Antonio. I think it was my understanding that you couldn't vote. Uh, you, so a, a person experiencing homelessness could self-affirm only on the April 6th right, vote window, right. only in that four hour yes. window. Right. So for each of those pop-up poll opportunities and all the days preceding the election, you could not vote. Right. You really could not vote uh, right. using self-affirmation, right. which is uh, yeah. like disproportionately disadvantages the folks who dominated that country. Right, and so the very first town hall meeting on May 29th of last year, that the, the city-led town hall meeting in Skid Row, they actually had you know pop up poll polling place right there, and so while we're you know getting hey we can go outside and vote right now, and so then when people are coming back wait a minute they didn't let me they said I couldn't vote, and so that that, that created an instant uh, energy of confusion and chaos, and you know we were unclear as far as can we get our people to the polls or or not like can we go now what is going on here. And so to, and then the city was, you know, going shucking and jiving, going back and forth. And, and so it really became unclear. 
and, and, and a lot of it's, there was a lot of people in our community that were spread out, and they didn't want to have anything to do with that because it sounded like a whole bunch of confusion. Uh, that's okay, and so we lost folks. And when we talk about you know in, in, in the country of America, you talk about any election that's you know sixty votes that's considered a, a, a highly close, a seriously close election. And then with all the other question marks, we could have easily gotten sixty more people to the poll. Uh, Mr. Garcia. I don't know if you heard the story, but I think they used um, the little Tokyo Library on Second in Los Angeles yeah. to pop up, yeah. and that that library is used by a lot of homeless people, and the vote was 60, right? I heard through several people that um, there were people in that library, homeless people, that wanted to vote. Yeah. They went to the librarian, and they said, you can't vote, and then people in suits and ties came in, sir, please vote, please vote. There was at least 60 homeless people in that library. Mm -hmm. And um, so I heard that for several people. Yeah, and so, you know, the stories. Yeah, and so I mean, we hear all kinds of stories. And so, unfortunately, in a court of law, um, it's a matter of what you can, what, not what you know, it's what you can prove. So, you know, you know, while all that information is riveting. And so that's why on this exhibit, the very, very last sign, which I think many idea was that, hey, if you're anybody just walking up in and you had any kind of problems voting, you know, put your contact information in, and, and maybe there's a, a, a email trail, paper trail of some kind, and then, you know, that could really help uh, move this whole energy forward because, you know, it's embarrassing. You know, I'm born and raised in, in the city of Los Angeles. I'm a proud Angelino, homegrown to the roots. And, you know, so it's all about the American democratic process. And so part of this fight is, is about the Skid Row Neighborhood Council. But the other part is about upholding the American democratic process. Like if we let this effort just fall away and we walk away, throw up our hands and say, oh, well, I mean, we just let corruption happen. Yeah. You know, in the days of what's going on in Washington, D.C. And, and so many other levels of government, we cannot just let corruption happen. You know, so even though it's like, you know, the little engine that could, David versus Goliath, there's so many, you know, stories, whether it's in the Bible, whether it's in life, uh, you know, we got to keep going. We have to, and so that's why we're so Tom, proud that, that we're doing it. I'm sorry, Tom has a question. Kathy Goodis went from half a question to a full question. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just because uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not sure where legal issues get involved in this. But, but one of the main dynamics where the online voting is so unfair, and I don't know if there are legal implications to this is that when they decided to do it, they already had like 800 or 1,000 people who had voted in the last DLANC election pre-registered. Oh. So those people immediately got, like, here's your PIN number, boom, boom, boom. So those people, when they tried to access the system, had it fairly easy because they were already in the system. But everybody else who wasn't in the system, that's where you're hearing all the, you know, I tried four times and I could, you know, you know, that's where all like the technical horror stories popped up. But the people who intend to vote for D Lang, because they have a history of voting in D Lang collection, they were all pre registered. So in that like 12, 13 day time frame, it was easy for them, much easier for them to vote than for everybody else. How that might violate voting rights. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but that is definitely something a lawyer should Absolutely, and then, and then piggyback off of that, um, as far as uh, neighborhood councils and online voting, that actually was a pilot project that started in 2016. The uh, normal neighborhood council, the citywide neighborhood council elections was the very first time that they had online voting. It was uh, uh, held by a third party, uh, conducted by a third party organization called Everyone Counts. We still don't know who they are. <laughs> They're based out of San Diego. And they oversaw and put forth the uh, all the portals, the voting voting portals, and they both have all this uh, expertise. Um, so the city went to all 96 neighborhood councils at that time and said, if you could, before that election, said if you could opt in or opt out. There were 35 neighborhood councils that opted in and said, yes, we want online voting. Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council was one of them. And so when we put forth our subdivision application. They said, well, because D-Link voted for online voting, then that's why you guys would be subjected to online voting. Herman, the community that was subdividing from the Royal Seiko Neighborhood Council, uh, because the Royal Seiko Neighborhood Council opted out, 
They said that Herman's vote wasn't subjected to online voting. So now, uh, if they take that even further, in the 2016, the normal neighborhood council elections, um, online voting by conducted by everyone counts out of San Diego. Studio City neighborhood count, it was the, the big you know fiasco uh, where someone within the city's department that was uh, overseeing the, uh, helping with the elections, they accidentally, like when you upload sensitive documentation, everybody that registered, they actually hit the wrong button and everybody's sensitive information with everybody that, I mean, everybody had everybody's stuff, personal information. And so there were major red flags. And so everyone counts um, while they, you know, basically said, oh, well, that wasn't us. That's like, oh, that was like, you know, driver error. Um, they said, you know, so then the city actually still went with uh, everyone counts. And even after our election, when there was a bunch of uh, uh, voting issues, uh, everyone counts still wound up getting a city contract to continue to administer uh, online voting. So there's a whole lot of issues with online voting, not just our election, but the entire online voting process through this organization called Everyone Counts. So, you know, there's a lot of digging and uh, there's a lot of uh, information that we can put forth. And again, it's not just about Skid Row, it's about the, uh, also upholding the American democratic process. So why was it only 13 days before the election if they already knew that it was supposed to be part of, of the on, that the online voting was supposed to be part of this? That's this a good question. Well, our application, again, uh, subdivision process uh, we got approved November uh, 2015. City and attorney's office finalized in September of 2016. From the window to uh, offer a subdivision application was from October 16th to December 19th. Um, after that, the city came back of January 11th, 2017, and said, Skid Row, we approve, we accept your application. Whew, that was our second victory. Great. So now from there, the subdivision ordinance, uh, number four, said that uh, they had the city must, within 90 days, have to have our subdivision election. And so through that on January 11th, and, and come to find out through Adrian's uh, PRAs, the, the naysayers went to the city the very next day, January 12th, and said, hey, we want to oppose this, we want to oppose this. And so they're basically saying, you know, blame it on lack of outreach, oh, this is new to us, whatever, whatever. And so at that time, while there was an issue with um, online voting, um, their actual uh, studio city, after their uh, fiasco of the previous year, um, in June of 2016, their council member, Paul Krikorian, issued a, a city ordinance and put a temporary ban on all online voting for neighborhood councils across the city. So that ban was still in place, and that's why the city door out three families saying there won't be online voting, there won't be online voting, because there was a temporary ban. Now, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the downtown business sector influenced downtown's uh, council member, and all of a sudden, they were 13 days before our election, said, so, oh, we're still gonna keep the ban on all the other uh, neighborhood councils online voting, but we're gonna allow it just for this one. And so then even uh, that in, in and of itself, because I'm like, if there's an ordinance banning all online voting, if they're gonna lift the ban, it's either all of them or not. You can't, sep it doesn't say in the legal language of, the, of that ordinance uh, that you can separate and extract one election away from the, from the lot. So that's another talking point that we can bring up legally. McNinney. Um, I didn't realize this up until a few weeks ago, and you know, once again, huge thanks to Adrian and other supporters of our community that have brought forward these records, and you know, people took videos, and you know, I've been going through. Vid I'm, st I'm still, we're still putting together puzzle pieces of what happened, but I was looking. The first town hall we had that the city conducted or hosted which is when they said there's not going to be any online voting. It was at the Jameswood Community Center, yes. the same place where we had the election. Yeah. We had a supporter of our community videotape that meeting, thank, thank God. And um, there was one, at that meeting, <laughs> there was one of the most high-powered lobbyists in the entire city of Los Angeles sitting in the back row named Ann Diamato. I think I have her name right. Yeah. But I didn't, we didn't know that until recently I realized who she was and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's her in the video. And she says on the video, why not online voting? Estella and, Lopez too, she's still sitting in front right, of me. Right, and so, and, and so that was the like, top, top, top lobbyist of the city. 
And um, actually, Stephen Box with Dunn said, well, you know, you'd have to, it's banned, but you'd have to lobby your council member. And you know what? She's a lobbyist. That's exactly what she did. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think what's really, I mean, in terms of the, um, the federal acts in terms of um, voter rights, this idea of having four hours, if I hadn't thought about that four hour window to be able to self-affirm your status where you live is really important and, and certainly speaks to the issues of the, you know, um, the predominantly African American voters in that, in that situation in Skid Row constituting the demographics. So I think that in combination with the incredible confusion about what you needed to upload, and it changed three times. Um, so I tried to, I, I uploaded things as, as a member of Valley Property Department, and um, I didn't hear anything back. And then I got another notice sent, not from the city or power, but from, from LA Property Department, saying, well, now they're saying you need this, right? So there's this clear path of that changing within just the 13 days. Now, I have means, right? Uh, I, I'm sitting here with some of them, right? Um, so I filed a new set, even though they didn't tell me I had to. Now one would think that would be me trying to vote twice, uh, but I didn't because I never heard anything back, and so then I wrote, and there is a space from the 27th until the 4th. Um, that's a big difference, then I had two days left, but I still never got any confirmation. And so if that's my situation, then the civil rights abuses seem pretty clear. This is sort of speaking to the same language as disenfranchisement in the South from before the Voting Act. And so um, it, it, it is, you know, your, your sentiments that you've both expressed in terms of, um, there may be one element of it that's about, um, you know, moving ahead, but the other element is about, you know, fundamental democratic rule. When we see in downtown, especially, like when you compare, and I think, of, like, I want to know about Herman, even though I'm so, I, I know what it's about, right? It's about developers wanting Skid Row, right? That's what it's really about. But I still kind of want to know about Herman. Like, right. did they have online voting? They did not. They didn't yeah. have online voting, so it really was only. And so they followed. Right. Um, and did they have a, and they had a four hour block of time where people, uh, and they didn't have pop ups. No. Uh, yeah, so we, I mean, we know the setup. I mean, I'm not, uh, but still, I mean, just the fundamental, um, sure. pra you know, sure. practical elements are. Sure. Um, are, are, are ridiculous. I have one other thing I wanted to just so I said I didn't mean to like testify, but since other people were mentioning this, I had to add it. I had to add it, and also because I, I do find it really shocking that uh, personally I had, I had real difficulty voting. Um, the other was about your t your stint on the neighborhood council, and I don't want to distract from the the problem at hand, but I'm really curious about the ways in which you were able to gain traction in making the Skid Row. Um, voice heard, right, as the sole member, right, that was, you know, representing, well, and what you faced. Kevin Michael was on it, right. You had overlap. Yeah, so I was curious about how that, how that worked. I never, I, I realized I never really heard, I've never really heard stories about it. Sure. And I'd be interested in knowing, the, like, like, obvious, I mean, I know what the obvious obstacles are, but I just wonder if you can... You know, sure. Um, on the downtown, I said it's neighbor council. Before I got on that board in 2008, um, I had already established myself uh, as a well-respected community activist in Skid Row. Um, that there are people, members of uh, D-Link, that uh, encouraged me to run, and others, because it run. So when I got on the D-Link board, I was already well-respected, and plus I'm very vocal and very active. And so me knowing politics at that time, there were 28 board seats. So knowing that if you want if you want to push anything, you need 15 votes. So I know there's a lot of networking with my fellow board members because I'm I'm going to need 14 votes. You know, as far as Skid Row uh, votes, we may have had four or five votes depending on the issue of a Skid Row, but then we still need you know 10 more, 10, 11 more votes. Um, and so then I was well liked, well respected on that board. And so when I got on that board, I already knew the grassroots organizations. And so our basketball league came through, Skid Row came through Street Ball League, uh, Skid Row uh, Photography Club. Um, we had a bunch of other different, I mean, Harvey Department, Drama Stage, Coom Run. Um, there are a lot of different uh, organizations. So our whole thing was, before I got on that board in 2008, so understanding going back to the beginning, when uh, downtown Central Neighborhood Council uh, from the 99 city, uh, 90, 1999 city charter, uh, downtown Central Neighborhood Council came online officially in 2002. 
And so from 2002 to 2008, that's six years, where with Skid Row, we did have other representation on it, but nobody in our community even knows who that person was, really. And that person didn't do anything, so we looked at six years, and at that time, neighborhood councils each got $50,000. So we're looking at six years of $50,000, Skid Row got nothing. That's $300,000 that our community didn't get anything out of. So when I first came in there, my first order of business, like, well, well, you guys had six years of a head start. You know, we, you know, need stuff. And so Operation Face of Skid Row, was, uh, we got brooms, I mean, there was a lot of stuff. And so that was my impetus for doing that. And then there are other people from the community that, you know, me being on the board, um, I would encourage people to come to me and I could help shepherd things through. Other people on the board would try to go through the others, one, some of the other members on, uh, uh, on the Downsaw Sense Neighbor Council represent Skid Row, and they couldn't get their stuff, push their stuff through. And so then that's when I started realizing this is going to be an yeah. issue. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I know how to navigate the system, but they're really like, if there's a filter that's, you know, stopping the skid row energy from coming through. And so at, towards the end, there was a lot of complaints of, 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 the, of, the, of that last board saying, hey, you know, skid row's getting too much. You know, we need to, some of this funding for, you know, projects in, skid, in, 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 in downtown Los Angeles. And so, um, that, that's, so the, the, the tension and the energy was uh, uh, building there. And so rather than try to, we couldn't put placeholders in, in, uh, in place to try to help for the next era of skid row representation. So our whole thing is like, look, this, this is coming to a dead end. So before this car runs, completely runs out of gas, let's pull this over, hop out, start a skid row neighbor council and, and keep on going. But also, I, I think that like, like I'm gonna check, I, mean, I think it's not just about the money that they give out, no. but it's also it's also about the, the, the things, as Jeff said earlier, the things they sign off on. And a lot of times, um, the Skid Row interest was not what got signed off on. It was just the opposite of what got signed off on. Well, it's that funneling of the seat at the table, because I was trying to put together the pieces of, you know, who from the business improvement district now, thinking in those terms, you know, gets to sit at the table when the community plan is discussed at City Hall, versus the community having its representation separately, but not necessarily in regular meetings. And so trying to like, I'm trying to understand the bid and the neighborhood council in relationship to one another and, and their regularized meetings with um, you know, other head honchos in the city. So what I learned, if I could speak quickly, what I learned um, from being on the downtown center neighborhood council board was that before I got to downtown sense that it, what Charles Porter told me, the concept of the neighborhood council was to create uh, a, a representation separate from the bids. Because the bids are already, you know, they have lobbyists, they, they already connected to City Hall. And so the neighbor council is supposed to be like, we the people, like everybody else. So then what happened was, you know, the bids got in there and part of the, that, that uh, the farming energy, when they're forming the actual, the, the, the definitions of what a neighbor council is, and they say, hey, well, we need to be included because we're stakeholders in these communities. And so now the bids, and so when I got on, the bids were able to be on uh, neighbor council boards. And so when I got on downtown since neighbor council 2000, the fashion district bid was on there, the uh, historic core bid was on there, the downtown center bid was on that board, uh, the uh, Central City East Association was on that board. So there, and there may be one or two, so there are multiple mm -hmm. seats that went in the, the business seats. So as opposed to a, the mom and pop business owner, of who the seats were generated for, um, the obviously the bids were just right. you know penetrating on these neighborhood council. So not only would they have their bid voice, now they would influence the neighborhood council voice. So now it looks like oh, it's overwhelming. You know, this is what this community wants when it's a, really just the business sector that's influencing that whole mm -hmm. that whole structure. Yeah. Yeah. And so now the, uh, there's another fear with the city neighborhood council, like you know, how many seats would they have, or could they influence our voice? And so another reason of opposition. Yeah, as far as I can tell, that's unique to D-Bank. That is, in the D-Bank bylaws, they specifically say that business improvement districts are eligible for the business seats. And uh, so there's a number of bid executive directors who sit on D-Bank. Um, and uh, it creates, I think it creates a conflict of interest in some cases, because like Rena Betty, who's the executive director of the fashion district, um, was, was uh, she was, told by her board to advocate in favor of uh, City Market South, which is a big development project. And at the same time, various parts of that were before D-Bank, where she was a member and voted in favor of them. Um, and I think that's a violation of, of 
of state ethics laws. Um, and uh, it, it's going to be just a normal situation the way the bids and you think over now. But as far as I can tell, that doesn't happen elsewhere in the city. I think that's the only Not even in Hollywood. No, not in Hollywood. <laughs> there, there's, there's very little bid involvement in neighborhood councils there. Uh, I think there's one Hollywood, one of the Hollywood neighborhood councils, there's a member who's married to somebody on the board of a bid, but that's it's different. They bid, in, they also don't just own property, but bid in the neighborhood. So I think, no, it's just the bank. I, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not surprised. Well, I mean, that's where the, the real concentration of money is. You know, Hollywood, there's a lot of money going on, but nothing but compared not. to downtown. And then again, the bids have their own voice, so there's no need to pile up yeah. because there's little to no opposition in terms of the dominant voices in the other community. Yeah. Why they're doing it downtown, we don't know, but they, they have a stranglehold. Yeah. Any other questions? Mr. Garcia. Um, just one last comment. Uh, the 15 days before the election, that's when they have uh, the online voting. Yes. So it's like if you have a football game and you change the rules in the middle of the game, and you say, okay, that's not fair or right or right. legal or moral or ethical or, you know. Right. And the, and the, the, you, can't, you can't change the rules in the middle of the game. You know, right. You know, that's, right. Exactly. And, and that's what we've been saying. And so, again, that comes down to state law. And so we, you know, we've got to get some, you know, some folks like to help us and dig, dig up and find the, you know, the, the statutes and find out where this. But again, the city's arguing that neighborhood council elections aren't subjected to a state law, and so, but we're going to bring that all of that forth, and and you know, because it doesn't make sense, it's not possible. And so for us, it's just like in the presidential election. Imagine, you know, Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Imagine 13 days before the election, there was a significant change. Yeah. Oh, all hell's gonna break loose, and so that's the same way we feel here. You mean like James Comey saying he's gonna reopen the investigation? All of a sudden, it, thirteen days before, what? You're gonna what? That's insane. But doesn't that work the other way as well? Because apparently there were no strict rules, and the, and they were just making them up as they were going. Because that's what it really looked like. I, I mean, how are you go? On what basis are you going to, uh, you know, go to court? Because apparently, the, you know, the rules are just changing all the time. So there's no right. precedent. There is no uh, right. nothing to compare it to. Uh, well, well, yeah. well, 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 what we what we have is the subdivision ordinance itself. And the subject order said, you know, it's going to be election within 90 days. And then, you know, further done said that it would be just be one physical polling place, a four hour voting block. That's it. Yeah. And so, you know, how many of those 807 online no votes really would have come to Skid Row and stood in line for four hours to cast that vote? And so, you know, if, if, if you can say 61 people would not have shown up or more, then there, that's, that, that's a difference major in, in the whole election. Sir. This is a question. Sure. Well, it is. I'll turn it into the question. Mm -hmm. Isn't online voting for uh, the majority of residents in Skid Row a sort of poll tax? Because, you know, if I'm living on the street, I don't have, like all those things you said that they don't have. So it's in essence a poll tax, and it's also in essence a test like they used to have in, in the yeah, South right. when you went and tried to uh, apply for the right to vote. Yeah, it's a, essentially a literacy test or whatever. Mm -hmm. So basically City Hall is Mississippi. Mm -hmm. That's a that right. That's what we got here. Yeah. 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 Woo. That's yeah. Well said. No, um, Adrian, yeah, there's, oh, there's another question. Oh, yeah, please. Like, also, I don't know what you're thinking, but you're in who's Kathy. Kathy. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have you ever actually received confirmation that your vote got counted? Um, I, yeah, I was just looking at my, through my email to try and figure out. Because, like, what? if I if ever it never, received if it, never got counted, could there be people from the right. right. yeah. whose votes just got ignored? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Or people, well, that's the whole thing. You about got the thing about the documentation changing? Yeah. That's just blatant. Yeah. Right. 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 Kevin's, and so, Kevin's pointing to the board. You can write that down. I, I she she already did. She yeah. did. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Yeah. She did. 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 She did
So yeah, it's so it's not legal to have yeah. someone vote and then be like, psych, that didn't count. Right. Halfway through the <laughs> right. 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 And that's no, where no. again, so what we you know, McNinney did a wonderful job of uh PRA requesting for all the voter tallies. You know, every inch that we could think of, every list, spreadsheets, email, paper to whatever, you know, not only from done directly, but then everyone counts. You know, the no, the numbers don't add up. You know, she's looked at it, I've looked at it, everybody that's looked at it, the the, num the math is it is horrible. It's not nothing even close. Well, if you take this column, you add it with this column, and then if you, mo well, no, if you take these three columns, and they went, it, it's impossible to come up with 826 and, and 766. You know, 1388 total ads, but then there were over 16, 1,601 people that voted in total, including the 202 paper ballots. That's what it says on the physical, the, the final uh, uh, voting spreadsheet, but in the actual voter polls, the, the, those you can't find those numbers in any, any kind of mathematical equation that you can come up with. So it's gonna be interesting when we get to a court of law to see how the city's gonna work their magic to make all of those <laughs> numbers work. Because now if they're gonna have some new set of math or a new set of documentation, okay, now you're in violation of the, uh, the PRA request because we, we asked for everything. So they, so they say we have everything. We've even gotten confirmation of the, you, you have everything, you have what we have. Okay, we don't see it. It's, we don't think they're gonna see it either. So this is gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, a, a tremendous embarrassment for the city if, you know, if they want to fight this, and uh, 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 you know, in the court of law. So right now, where we are in the court of law, the process before we go to the actual trial, we're in the trial setting conference for the TSC, as been known in the legal world. And so the whole thing is, the, the court says, well, let's see if you guys can settle it in agreement before we set up the trial. Let's see if you both sides and. And I know the city does not want, you know, because all of this is going to be, you know, pub matter of public record, you know, all this is going to be brought forth and it's going to be embarrassing. You know, the, the, the fact that just alone, the sound bite that Skid Row has to sue the city of Los Angeles because they cheated them out of an attempt to, you know, create a Skid Row Neighborhood Council to improve our community. And especially in this day of homeless crisis, that's going to be a bad look, especially for the, for the mayor. They don't care. Okay. So I think I think I think we should wrap it up. I, I, I want to give you one last. Uh, you want to have the last word here? <laughs> oh, my wife. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> here I've got a question which is really kind of foolish, but I'm uh, kind serious. Which is about you've had a lot of success uh, getting uh, representation to, for various public records act uh, lawsuits, and I wonder if if there's any advice you have not already shared. With, um, with uh, Jeff and Catherine about, about uh, representation. Uh, no, I've actually, I've shared everything I know. <laughs> 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 it hasn't been yeah. Okay, well, okay. Thank everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, India. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everybody. Have you gotten a response from any of this? Because it's clear I mean it's not 600 pages like the other documents but this is really really out punching did you get there have you gotten responses particularly from any of the people <laughs> yes Adrian that's what I want to know <laughs>